Welcome everyone back to another lesson of how to edit in Sony Vegas. For this one, we are going to be editing a short little clip. We're going to be cutting it and just doing the basic things you would do to a video. I'm not going to talk too much in this one. I'm just going to go straight to the point. So what we want to do, first of all, is obviously we want to import our clip. There's two ways of doing this. First way is going to file and open. Personally, I don't like to do it that way. It takes a lot longer. So what I do is I go to the folder and just drag in the clip. It is that simple. First, what I do when I import a video for the first time is I like to go to the properties and just make sure that everything is correct. So as you can see here, the frame rate is on 59. I'm just gonna go to 60 and making sure that this is 1280 by 720, which is the original video size, leaving the rest on none, leaving that on one, zero, and pretty much everything else except from the one that says resample mode that will be disabled the audio will be fine you don't need to change too much just make sure that this one is the same as mine that is a really high quality for the audio back to the video and apply press ok and just like every video i go to properties here and disable resample we don't want that now that we've done all that what we're going to do is pretty much view the video really quick and see the parts that we want. So as you can see from the beginning of my clip, I didn't have the video on full screen, the game. So I definitely don't want that in the video. What I'm going to do is skip over to the part where it starts. So just about here. And now we get to a very important tool, which you will use all the time. No matter what you do, everyone uses the tool and that is to cut the clip. One way of doing this is you can go to the video track right here and right click in and go to cut, but that takes a lot longer. So the easiest way is to press S on your keyboard and this will cut it for you. Knowing the shortcut key is really useful because when you're editing, you can just go over to the next part and let's say you want to cut this bit and you just press S and you keep pressing it and that cuts your video up into little pieces, which then you can edit them and delete them or just remove them if you don't want them. Let's say we didn't want to actually cut this bit. To undo it, you do Control and Z. This is another keyboard shortcut, which is really useful to know and you will use it absolutely all the time because we all make mistakes and we do Control and Z to undo it. Because we didn't want the first bit, all we got to do is you can either right click and go to delete or you can just press the delete key on your keyboard and that will remove that. Looking through this video, we don't want all of it. We are going to cut some bits out. So, for example, when you get bits like here, you can see that. OK, let's go all the way to the end. Right about where the race ends. So here we don't want this bit. And all you got to do is go to the part where you want to cut it. So for me, I think it would be best if I did it right there. I'm going to use the next frame just a little bit to go a little bit ahead. And I'm going to cut it about there. Pressing delete key to remove this last bit. When you're editing with long clips, there's one thing that you should know. And that is you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in. So if you use the scroll wheel and go up, this will zoom into the track. And this is just so that you can actually edit every second rather than a minute. If you look at the timeline, you can see it has gone from minutes to seconds. So now it's 35 seconds, 40, 45, 50. But if we zoom out, it will slowly. So it's gone to tens now. And that's 20s. And you can see it keeps on going until you get to obviously like minutes. I wanted the video to be cut at exactly one minute and I'm going to use the scroll wheel to go up and I'm going to go to one minute, which is right here. And as you can see, I've gone past it, but I can click on the previous frame and keep on pressing it until you get to one minute, which is right about there. So I'm going to press S again to cut it. We are going to go all the way to the end right about here. And let's go back a little bit right about here press s on your keyboard click on here and press delete drag this all the way back 
So now you can see we have our little clip right here. It's a short little video, which isn't too great, but we are just getting used to the tools. What I want to do with my video right now is something you can all do. And that is if you scroll up to zoom in, you can actually drag this clip right here into the next one and this will just overlap it. It makes like a transaction where they both fade into each other. And what you can actually do is that if you get this icon and you right click, you can have all the settings here. And these are the way you want it to fade from one clip to another. This is the basic one. They both have the same timing. So they both fade out and move on to the next one. This one is the one, the clip on the left will fade out normal and the other one will fade out quicker or fade in quicker, my bad. But we are gonna go with this one for now. Same goes for the audio as well. If you want the audio on the left to fade out quicker and you want the other one to pick up, you would go with this one because on the left side, the line goes down and the one on the right picks up. So I'm gonna go with this one and you can change the timing of it. So how fast you want it to fade out just by dragging it back and forth. One second is quite long. Let's go with 20 seconds and just quickly preview through the frames. As you can see, it has got a really smooth transaction where they fade. Another thing that we can add to the video is a fade in and fade out. These are really simple to do. All you gotta do is go to the clip. So let's have a fade in. To do so, you would go to where you see this little icon pop up, make it go this way so it fades in. And same goes for audio. You just drag it in a little bit. Just like before, you have the options to change the fade type. So if you right click on here, when the icon pops up, you have this one, this one, and all these ones. With audio, this one and that one are the best two. So I'm gonna go with that one and the video, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. So if you quickly look through it, you can see it's got a really slow fade in. We can adjust the timing of it by making it a little bit shorter. Now, another thing is the audio is quite loud. So to turn down the audio, you can go to this right here and just drag it down until you are happy with it. The lower it is, the quieter the video and the higher it is, the louder the video. You could do a similar thing to the video if you want it to be more darker. You do the same thing and this is the opacity of it. So if you turn down the opacity, it will make it darker. But this can be used for other layers such as images to make them fade in with the clip. We can also apply a fade out at the end of it to make it a little bit better for the video by doing the same thing as last time. And I think I'm gonna go with this one and the audio is gonna fade quicker than the video. Another thing about Sony Vegas is that there's two other ways of changing the audio and that is you can turn this one down or increase it. If you wanted this clip, let's say you wanted it louder, you would drag this up and you will increase this one here. 12 is the maximum you can have if you wanted it any louder. But if you want it to be even louder than 12, you can duplicate the audio layer and that will make it louder. But make sure they are obviously in sync. I'm not gonna want that, so I'm just gonna do Control Z till I get back to the stage I was before. And there we go. You have a mute button right here. Let's say you want to preview the video without audio, you would press the mute button here and that mutes the whole track layer. So it only plays it with the video. You can do the same with the video if you wanted the audio instead. So now we've actually gone over a few basic tools which you use all the time. Now, let's say we want to add in some effects to the video, like color corrections. You go to the video effects tab right here and go to where it says color correction. This is a very popular one for making videos look more cinematic and people use it for montages. Let's give it a, let's go with a blue, I guess. If you don't want the color correction to be blue, you can move the mid tone to a different area and you can see that it is now green, yellow, and all the other colors. But I'm just gonna leave it on blue and exit out of this. If you look at the video track right now, you can see that you have a icon symbol that is now highlighted. This means that you have an effect applied to it, so video effect, and you can see on this side, you don't have one. Sometimes you will need to look at these to see where you've actually applied 
the video effects too. Most of you will know this feature, but if you don't, then this is something you might want to know. And this is if you right click in this area right here, you will get these options right here. So you can either insert a audio or a video track. I'm going to insert a video track to show you how to make images blend in with the video. We are going to look for an image. If I go in here and let's go with this blue. If you drag it in here and we move it all the way down. If your image is like mine where it doesn't fill the video and it's missing, let's say you either have some black lines or it's not big enough, you can stretch it to the screen by right clicking on it, going to properties and disable or untick this and that will stretch it to the screen. To actually make this image blend in with the video, you can either turn down the opacity, which is here, and that will make it blend. Or you can go to here where you have this icon symbol. And if you click on this, you have all the options for different types of effects. A popular one is add. Another one that's quite good is screen and overlay. The other ones are okay to use, but the problem with them is that some of them make the video look odd. So for example, if I go to subtract, you can see the video is now really not what you would expect. It is more of an orange color rather than blue. You can keep on messing about with the ones that you like. Once again, you can turn down the opacity if you're not happy with it, if you want it to be a little bit more faded out. The next useful thing to know is that if you are working with multiple layers, let's say you've got about 15 or 20 of them, you've just got a lot of them and you get confused with which is which, you can go over here where it says one and next to it you have an empty box. This is the track name. You can double click on it, left click on it, and you can give it a name. So let's say this is gonna be image the next one is going to be video. And the last one is going to be audio. And as you can see, it just makes it easier to identify which is which if you're working with multiple layers. If you're the type of person that does have a lot of tracks, you can actually shrink them and make them smaller by going up here. And when this icon pops up, you can just make them smaller. This will just compress them down to a a lot thinner line and I guess it's useful if you have a small screen or would like to see the timeline a lot better. Moving on to the next tool which a lot of people like to use and that is the marker tool. This is something I personally don't use a lot but I do sometimes use it if I'm working on long videos because in a way it sort of splits up the video and creates different sections of it. To create a marker, all you gotta do is press M on your keyboard and you can either give it a name or just click off it and that will create a marker. As you can see, now we have a marker one here. If we want to create another marker, you press M and we have marker two. You can also move them if you don't want them in this position right here, just by clicking on them and moving them. And what we are gonna do is we're gonna have one marker here and the second marker right here. So we can tell that this is the first bit of the video and this is the second part. Let's say you want some of the markers to actually have names. We're gonna go to the first one, double click on it and let's call it start clip and click off it. You can see it's got a name now and the other one we can call it end clip. And that is pretty much it for the second lesson. These tools are something you should know because they will come in handy when you're editing videos in Sony Vegas. I hope this video was helpful in some way possible. If you did find it useful or you thought this video was good, then give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think of this video by commenting down below. I will be doing part three of this, lesson three, which might be the last one because we've already covered most of the things that you need to know. And the rest of the stuff are advanced, so what I'm gonna do is split them into shorter clips or shorter videos. Lesson 3 will show you how to actually export the video 
and render it. 